Talking a lot of quarterbacks on the show today. We look ahead to week 10. We've got a game in Munich, Germany. i uh, excited to welcome my buddy Yogi Roth to the set to break down developmentally which quarterbacks he thinks uh, are killing it so far and who might turn it around. We're going to talk to the old guys that are kind of struggling this year as well. And underreactions, can the Vikings keep this up? It's all happening right now. Lots of overreactions to things going on. Oh my gosh, Bears fans roasting me right now on Twitter. Have anybody seen this? First of all, Bears fans, you lost yesterday, like this week. You lost in week nine, so I don't know why everyone's saying, don't get on the bandwagon. What, you lost? We lost. I can't say we, I'm from Chicago. First of all, you can't tell me what I can't say. It's my show. Uh, And you can definitely tweet us, keep it coming. I cannot believe, I, I think it's because it's been too long. Bears fans so mad, overreacting. I put up a post about how I said Justin Fields had a great game. <gasps> Shock horror. Show me one clip that I have said something bad or negative about Justin Fields. If I had questions about how they're surrounding him, if I defended Nagy and not put it, you know, I, I put I defended him to Bears fans. Have I have I come at Bears fans for how they've acted and behaved in sort of an unhinged matter manner this season? Sure I have. But I love Chicago. I would love for the Bears to turn it around, organizationally especially front office especially, surrounding him with good pieces so he's not running for his life, especially. But I love Justin Fields. I've always supported him. Why wouldn't I? So everyone's saying, don't get on the bear. I, I'm not on your bandwagon or whatever you want to call it. I was born in Chicago. I'm a Bears fan. And I've always said, I didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't say crap about Chicago or the Bears. I said, Justin Fields is my hit the lights player because he had an amazing performance and deserves love. And he should. And I hope he turns around. And maybe that you, you guys will get a win. I think what this is, Marissa, is the the me joking with stats week one about if Trey Lance beats my Bears, come on the show, and then the Bears beat San Francisco in that rainy game, and the world ended, and the Bears fans were like, we've had enough. We want to win. And I kind of get it. I haven't seen a dominant Bears team. I mean, we had the Forte years, of course, which I loved. Brandon Marshall, of course, will be on our show later this week to maybe discuss this, but a very like a real reactionary real angry bears fan base right now more so than the titans but the titans they've been to the they've crushed the afc they were the one seed they're a small market that's why they're mad all the time nobody talks about them chicago's a big city windy city should not be this angry about this but i mean i hope that they uh, they turn it around and of course uh it is time for that with what's going on in green bay with aaron Rodgers uh and company all right so those are some that's an overreaction that's happening this morning on my twitter feed at least but it's uh it's definitely interesting and i i do love the passion and i love fans so that's just part of the biz uh but let's get to some underreactions here uh and so let's start i mean in that same division but with a different quarterback you like that? Three, one, two, three. You like it? All right. And the tweets are coming in here. So honestly, obviously, you're seeing that. It's Kirk Cousins. Uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around what I'm seeing happen here. We had Mark Ingram come on the show and say he wants Andy Dalton to do the same thing. I, if this is going to trend. We saw Adam Schefter. If they didn't jump the shark, I, I don't know when it will. But it's going to keep rolling. Uh, and they deserve the love. They're winning, and they're winning in a crazy way. But that's what I think we're underreacting to, the way the Vikings are pulling off these wins right now. They are 7-1. and one. Credit to them for finding these ways to win but it has you have to just admit it no one's really talking about it it's been a bit odd and I'm so curious to see if they can keep it up so take a look at some of these numbers you got to start with the good of course Sunday Kirk Cousins led his fourth game-winning drive to cap his fourth fourth quarter comeback win this season and that already ties his career high in both categories and he's rewriting the narrative that he can't come through in the clutch which is what followed him and haunted him that and of course under the bright lights of prime time but then it's like okay that's the good and on the other side the Vikings have gone through these absolutely bizarre stretches during these games. In almost every win, they've started off hot, then they go into some sort of sleep snooze fest offensively, they go into airplane mode, Uh, then they blow a lead, and then they turn it into some weird 
fourth quarter escape artist, um, like magician stuff. So it's gotten them to the second best record. So it works, second best record in the NFL, the halfway mark of the season. But they're, they're ha I, I'm so curious to hear from Vikings fans, who I do think are the most downtrodden fan base in the NFL. The ones who have been through the most pain, the ones who need, the, need a win, and a win in the National Football League the most in a big way, in a deep playoff Super Bowl kind of way. Uh, I know everyone's got the Bills, there's that too, but the Vikings, the Vikings low key, they ha they've had it rough. Uh, how sustainable do you think this is, Vikings fans? Are you worried about it at all? Are you enjoying the process like we saw with the Bengals last year? The fans were just like, I'm in, I'm in on this, whatever it is. Uh, because part of me, part of my brain says, I don't know, they might have to be more consistent from start to finish if they're going to beat the top teams in the league. Remember, Eagles, they got blown out by the Eagles, a top team. But then a part of me says, listen, that exorcism sort of stuff, that when the Chargers stop charging, if they ever do, like there's something too that maybe this Viking squad has conquered some of those demons. So we are going to find out which it is at some point, and it might even be this weekend. Huge game, oh my gosh. Vikings, not commanders, that already happened. Vikings, Buffalo this week. Wow. All right. Uh, the other thing we're underreacting to, there's a game in Munich. I talked to Levante David yesterday about the Audubon and about Lederhosen and all of that. So we'll have that interview for you guys tomorrow uh, as they head to take on the Seahawks. It's Buck Seahawks, Brady, Geno Smith in Munich as part of the international series for the NFL. Uh, and we're it's all Geno all the time, right? We're talking about People wrote him off, he never wrote back. His relationship with Pete Carroll, all of that, and it's beautiful. Yogi Roth will be here. He worked with Pete Carroll at USC, so he'll have some insight into you know the, the, the legacy that is Pete Carroll and him adding to it with this next chapter. Uh, with Gino, of course, but we're underreacting people to rookie Kenneth Walker and his impact on the Seahawks because, I, yes, Gino deserves tons of credit for what he's doing, but his story kind of is overshadowing one of Kenneth Walker that deserves attention. Remember, the Seahawks, they were two and three after week five. Two and three. Second round pick Kenneth Walker became the starting running back following the injury to Rashard Penny. And look what's happened since. Just take a look at the numbers. They speak for themselves. The Seahawks haven't lost a game with Walker rushing for over 100 yards a game over that span and leading the entire NFL, the entire league with six touchdowns. I think Walker's taken over the lead for Offensive Rookie of the Year. I think that. Do you agree? Add up an Adam show. And if he keeps running like this, uh, he's going to run those Seahawks right into the playoffs and maybe right to a division title, which is insane to think about, but it might happen. So those Bucks are going to have their hands full uh, overseas internationally this weekend. Uh, another thing we are underreacting to, and uh, I want to fire three tweets throughout these shows, so let me know if you guys have any. Um, is, is my helmet still even up here? Oh, it is. Is no one talking about the Chargers? Can we pan up a little bit so we can... Look, even our, even our screen doesn't. Can we pan up a little bit with the camera? Probably not. Oh, slow. That's a slow pan. Oh, boy. I can't up further. <laughs> nope, can't do it. All right, well, there's a Chargers helmet somewhere up there in the... Uh, it's okay, Marissa. Don't, I don't care. Um, but nobody's talking about... The, did they disappear from the National Football League? Are they not doing well? If there's anything that can sum up the Falcons and Chargers, it is this exact play. Take a look. L.A. fumbling away a shot at a game-winning field goal, only to have the Falcons fumbling it right back to set up the Chargers walk-off win. This is amazing. But in, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I give this Chargers team so much credit for finding a way, like they just did there. No Keenan Allen, no Mike Williams, no Bosa, no Slater. Herbert has some sort of rib injury that he's battling through and fighting through. They're down 10 zip in the first quarter. LA fights back to get a 2017 win to move to 5 and 3. This is stuff that never happened with the Chargers. For like 10 straight years, this would not happen. They're right inside the playoff picture. Nobody is talking about the Chargers. And I think a lot of people wrote off this LA squad because of the, all the injuries that I just mentioned, the early season ones. But I think that they are proving week in, week out, they're a playoff contender. And I know Mahomes is crushing it and it looks great in that AFC West and he deserves all the love and they're probably gonna take the division. But you gotta credit Herbert and you gotta credit Staley for keeping this thing on track. Not many teams could do what they're doing in the face of adversity and all the injuries that they have and in that division with Mahomes, so I just think that that's something that we are underreacting to. Stop forgetting about the Chargers. All right, do I even want to look at my Twitter feed of these Bears fans? Oh, we have fun Twitter, Conrad's saying? What do we have? Oh, gosh. 
uh, relax, people. Kay Adams is from Chicago and has always been. No, 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 no. Listen, Kay Adams fan. We do not need to uh, defend my my uh, my Chicago elite. I have been very critical about to, about the organization, about the criticism of Matt Nagy and vilifying him in this entire situation solely, solely putting it on him. Then they cleaned house. And then for some reason, there's like a gatekeeping thing happening with Chicago. Like you can no longer be a fan if you've ever said anything nice about the Packers. Oh, we have another one, Conrad? Oh, Conrad's trying to make me feel better about this. She's a bandwagoner fan. Don't jump on the train, okay? We don't want to. Bear down. Why is everyone so angry? Why is everyone writing these tweets like that with their teeth clenched like that? I mean, you know, I'm going to wear Bears gear maybe every day for the rest of the week. I might do that. I might do that. What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? No, Chicago, I love you. Uh, I appreciate the, the honest. Uh, what is this? Oh, another one? Oh, gosh. All right. We're going to be you off next. Bye. Welcome back to Up and Adams. What is this? What is it? What, Marissa, what am I looking at? Quarterbacks that have beaten Aaron Rodgers and haunt his nightmares. Oh my God! Look at look at Josh Allen. Look at Jared Goff. <laughs> look at Taylor <laughs> Heineke. <laughs> Heineke is amazing. Wow, Aaron Rodgers. This is tough. And he, you know he had back-to-back -back New York guys, right? Daniel Jones, then Zach Wilson. That's rough. That was not kind. <laughs> not kind for Aaron Rodgers. Who made that? That's so mean. Aaron, we love you. We want you to do well. Bears fans aren't going to like that. This is Marissa McBride, my intrepid, Hi. wonderful producer. If you ever see a cool feature, cool music video, something on the show, she's got her hands all over it. Uh, and what are we doing here today? What did you find in this, these hallways of this uh, TVG studio? So I was clearing out the studio, looking through some storage, and I came across some gold. Okay. Our very own Up and Adams trading cards. Okay. I don't know why we haven't seen them until right now. I need to see these. Okay, so these are like old school, the, the football quarterbacks that I'm having a hard time letting go of and watching fail. Yeah. Okay. This is the pack I call the OG QBs. And okay. we're looking for one that we're going to keep in our K Adams starter pack. So out of the four, we're going to keep one. Okay, I love this. Let's do this, but I'm also looking at Twitter because I'm so annoyed with the Bears fans right now. So let's, Are they keep, lighting let's do you this. Up still? Lighting me up. But oh, that's okay. No. I have a feeling a Bears fan's not on this list, right? Absolutely. Yeah, no. Okay, so who do we got here? Absolutely not. So let's start with the first one I found. Okay. This one is the old Let Russ Cook. Russell Wilson. Okay. So we're going to look at his numbers from weeks one through nine in his past. Let me look. Let me see this. Okay. So these numbers aren't too shabby. He averages five wins, 66.0 uh, completion percentage. Not great, but it could be better, but okay, okay. 243 pass yards per game. And he doesn't miss games. He's amazing. He doesn't miss. Okay. 15 pass touchdowns, usually weeks one through nine in his past. 102.8 passer rating and only four interceptions. Yeah. I'm going to say this. I'm looking at the numbers. This is not old Russ. Everyone's saying, old Russ. This is healthy Russ. Healthy Russ. This is healthy Russ, people, because we know what he's capable of. And you can't, I, you cannot sell me on the fact that Russell Wilson just randomly fell off a cliff. So I'm hoping two weeks of rest, sandwiching that trip to London, I hope that is enough to get him back to the player that we know he can perform because, like, you can't, it's not a good card, that last card. I can't handle that. So uh, I'm not gonna, I'm, I honestly, I don't know if we're gonna see him healthy this season, though. I know. That's the thing. Uh, and he plays through all of this stuff and he wants to play through all this stuff. I'm gonna take that trade, and I don't really know how this works. My little nephew cool. will be so excited. I can trade this card in for another card. I'm trading it in because I don't think he's gonna be healthy. Okay, let's take a look real quick at his 2022 numbers just oh, to gosh. make sure that we wanna trade them in. Yeah. So, now, weeks Not one good. through nine, he's Not only good. he only has three quarterback wins. Yeah, he's got fifty eight point eight completion percentage. That's like nope, nope. Two hundred and forty two pass yards per game. <sighs> only six passing touchdowns. An eighty three point five passer rating. We're trading it in for any, literally any other quarterback card you might, unless it's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's you're Aaron Rodgers. Like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm trading in Russell Wilson. I'm done. I'm I'm for the rest of the season. I just don't think he's going to get healthy. What do we got? So next, unfortunately, we're going to the guy in Green Bay. He's Are in you? disarray. <laughs> That's not nice of you to do. Okay. Aaron so Rodgers. So this is one of those things where I'm opening the pack of cards, and this is now the training card. Show me, show me the the old Aaron. This is the old Aaron, the one that we know and admire. Yes. I don't know, love, admire. I don't know if admire is the word, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> he usually averages 4.6 quarterback wins by this time in the season. Okay. 65.5 completion percentage, 264 pass yards per game. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, 15, um, almost 16 passing touchdowns. 
at this t at this point in the season. I'm looking at the numbers. 105.5 passer rating. I know, he's so cutting. It's amazing. Look at like that, it was, the, it was the worst game I've ever seen last week. I know. Against the worst defense. I know, it's almost like is. we don't recognize um, him this year. So you wanna take a look at his numbers right now? Well this is, I'm looking at this card and I yeah. have it on my phone. This is Aaron with Devontae Adams. Mm -hmm. This is what this card resembles. This is Aaron with Donald Driver, Jordy Nelson, Greg Jennings, top receivers yeah. in the biz. That's what those first crazy years signify. Top receivers you can invest in. Now, what do we got from this Absolutely. season? Absolutely. And now this year, he's only got three wins, 64.7 yeah. completion That's percentage. Yeah, 232 passing yards per game, 14 passing Wait, put touchdowns. That back up. <laughs> Here's what we're doing. We're showing the card. Well, then we're talking about it, and then we're showing this card from this season to show how crappy the numbers are. <laughs> Can we see the card from this year again, please? Three wins, not great. That seven is staggering yeah. to me when, when it comes to picks. It, it's not good. Um, 89, like, passer rating, it's just, it's just abysmal compared to what he used to be. Uh, they didn't sign Odell. They didn't make a move. It's all self-inflicted. So what is your what is your question for me? Do I trade this in for something else? Knowing what we know of him this year, are you keeping him or are you trading it in? What are the how many other cards are there? We got two more. Two other cards. I'm gonna guess. Is it are you gonna have Gino in there to see if he can keep it up? I don't know. I can't tell you yet. I'm gonna trade it in because I think it, they're cooked and they're yeah. over. And I'm actually surprised that you went against the rules and brought up the Packers. So we weren't even supposed to discuss them, Marissa McBride. You know what? That is true. You made me break my own vow. On the show. Uh, okay, so I'm trading it in. Sorry, Russell Wilson. Sorry, Rogers. I don't believe either of you. Who Absolutely. else? Absolutely. So the next one we got is our guy, Matt Stafford. <laughs> Did you? This came out of nowhere. <laughs> what? Okay, so the, what am I looking at here? So the old Matt, even in Detroit, put up numbers in weeks one through nine throughout the throughout his past. He had he averaged 3.7 quarterback wins, 63.4 completion percentage, 276 passing yards per game. He's usually got at least almost 14 passing touchdowns at this point in the season, uh. a 93 passer rating. Okay, the numbers are good. The win column is brutal. Yeah, but in this. Detroit, we can let that one slide. I know, but now he's got a ring, and that's don't, pretty good. First year with the Rams, Super Bowl champion. Yeah, he led the league with 17 interceptions last year. He did throw for 41 touchdowns to offset that. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's going on this year. This year, um, and now we show this year's card. It's not looking too good. There we go. So he's got three. He's got three wins so far. 68.4 completion percentage, 241 pass yards per game, eight touchdowns, eight interceptions. It's the picks again. Woof woof yeah. woof woof woof. So eight interceptions, eight touchdowns. Uh, I know, man. This is the same kind of thing as Russell Wilson because I think I have to trade it in because it's so not exciting that I have to see what the next card is. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I bet kids go through that. What did we, like, remember, what was cool when we were, like, out? the kids are obsessed with these cards. Oh, yeah. Well, you're, uh, I low key, me. I low-key collected Pokemon cards. I have to admit it. I, I really did. I had a binder full of them. No, you didn't. Like, I didn't My nephews like have that. I just like and they sit there and they open these packs and I don't know what I'm looking at. And there's yeah. like Charizard, nine different versions of him. I know. And but I'm imagine, like, I can't handle this. Imagine you get an old Matt Stafford card. Like, that's pretty cool. He, he put up some good numbers, but this year, if you got a 2022 Matt Stafford card. You're trading that puppy in because it's it just in. like getting, it's like the beanie baby everybody has, so you don't want to collect it because it's like the one that comes in every Happy Meal and you're kind of like, eh, <laughs> all right, whatever. Or what, po weren't Pog school too, or Pogs? <laughs> Do you know what a Pog is? I don't know what a Pog is. <laughs> like, you're so young, she doesn't know what a Pog is. I love it. I love Happy Meals. You know, Meals, honestly, right? I was alive and like well for the height of the the Pog fandom, and I don't know what it is. I literally could not tell you what a Pog is, but it was really hot in the streets, I gotta tell you. Hot uh, in the streets. The, it's the same thing with Russell Wilson. It's, it's a little boring, and it's also, uh, I don't see it improving. I think it's an elbow injury. Who, did, did somebody say the el elbow injury was a thing to pay attention to? Yeah. Did somebody say it wasn't? Right Everybody away. else, Eric Weddle included, <laughs> on the show tomorrow. <laughs> I think it's an injury. It doesn't look like it's getting any better. Trade it in, what's the last one? I'm very nervous, but if it's this Gino, is, I'll be so excited. This is the last one that we found, and it's the goat himself, Mr. Tom oh! Brady. Let's okay. look at his prolific numbers early in his past years. Okay. He usually averages almost six wins in through nine weeks. He's okay. got 64.8 completion percentage, 274 passing yards per game. Yeah. <laughs> 
usually 16 passing touchdowns by yeah. now. Yeah. 99.3 passer rating, and this is through 20 years. 20 years. These are pretty good numbers for 20 years. Uh, that touchdown to interception, uh, to interception ratio was interesting. 10 touchdowns, though, you have to remember, in nine games. 283 yards. It looks good. But then you also have to remember Tom Brady drops back like a million times a game. So yeah. it's an inter interesting card. Uh, I I'm thinking I'm going to hold on to him, but I need to see this year's number. Yeah, let's see, let's see this one. So in 2022, he's got four wins so far. 65.3 yeah. completion that's percentage. One pick. That's that's better than in the past. Okay. 283 passing yards per game. That's still on par. I made the right decision here. 10 passing touchdowns, one interception, 90.5 passer rating. Uh, I'm gonna hang on to him. I yeah. know the right to You're so sweet that you could not screw me over. You had to put the best one last, which of I course. love. Of course. Uh, and I'm looking, I mean, wait, listen, you were in the room. We have Levante David. She produced it. And we talked to him yesterday. There, and we talked to Matt Castle, his former yeah. teammate. Turning point vibes yeah. for this Bucks Slamming squad. Slamming the podium. A little bit. Slamming the podium, cursing. him cursing. They seem really happy. Levante David was the leader of a players only meeting Absolutely. in which he talked to everyone and got them everybody on the same page. Didn't take credit for it. Yeah. Devin White had a great game. It all okay. has to do with that. The players taking taking accountability. Uh, Brady calling them out for effort. Mm -hmm. It's all coming to a head. And so I'm going to say that those Rams ignited something that they remember from last year that playoff yeah. lost the blood on the face and I'm holding on to Brady. I th actually think the Bucks do turn it around. So we're gonna keep- And it's not like, I'm sorry, Atlanta, did, what are you doing? The Saints lost, the Panthers lost. Anybody anybody want to challenge Tom Brady once in a while? It, they're giving it to him on a silver platter. I know, I know. Always. Are you worried yeah. about him though, Jalen Hurts? No. Absolutely not. You made, a, you made it through a whole segment without talking about the Eagles. You're welcome. I'm quite You're impressed welcome. and quite shocked. I got the. I can be I, unbiased. I had the Sometimes. under on FanDuel Sportsbook. All right, coming up next, uh, everyone knows I'm all in on Tua as the MVP. No, I'm not. That's not true. I think he needs to be in the conversation. Everybody relax. Jeez Louise. Oh boy. I'm all in on Tua. Look at him go. Hi, Landon. What's up? I got somebody here to see you. What's up, bro? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, man? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? What's up, nice to meet you. What's up, bro? He had no clue. He had no clue. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> How you doing, bro? You good? Yeah. <laughs> good, good, man. Pretty cool good, or good. what? I like the jersey too, dog. <laughs> wipe the tears, man. Wipe the tears. <laughs> Lamar Jackson wiping the tears of Landon Berry, that is a young super fan of the MVP, uh, and he has a heart condition he's dealing with. He obviously did not know that Lamar Jackson would be arriving and entering that room, and it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. That is a five-star quarterback right there. Da -da -da -da! And it brings us to this joint now by the author of this Britless phone book here, five-star QB, one of the most talented people I know because he does it all. He's a quarterback guru, a filmmaker, an on-air personality. Uh, he's who I hit up when I need travel tips or travel <laughs> ideas. Yogi Roth is here, hi! What's happening? I haven't seen you in a long time. I know, I, I mean, I'm sure you were going down memory lane too. Yeah. I mean, over a decade ago, we're Crazy. up in like Bristol, Connecticut. Okay, can we talk about that yeah. for a minute? So Yogi, who of course, uh, Elite 11, did TV, all, everything, author. When did you, this was the summer, right? Yeah, spent three years on it and released it in late July. We're gonna get into this. Oh, you yeah. worked with Pete Carroll, of course. You've worked with the, and seen all these young quarterbacks up close and personal. But Yogi and I met like a long time ago in Bristol. I think it was my first trip to Bristol ever, not yours. No, I would go on spring break when I was in college and like just kind of sit in the control room. Really? Like, this is a job. I used to think the TV people, like they were like lawyers or teachers, or like they, definitely this isn't a full time job. Yeah. And then I'd go up there and Everybody up there, like Reese Davis, Herbie, all those guys would let me come and hang in the studio. And I just watch and be like that guy behind the camera and it's like, whoa, this is a thing? Yeah. So that was cool to actually go there for a possible job opportunity. Well, so yeah, so there was an audition for something called U a Unite, right? Oh, and right. it was for on ESPNU. And like, this is like, so I know nothing about, like, like it was less than zero about college football, but I was like, yes, anything, anything to get there. I think I flew myself there. Like, I, it was a complete disaster. This was so, so long ago. And it was, you, and it was, the audition was, beat, it was all day. It felt like it was all day. Oh yeah, it and was all day. Intense. Like, and all day. And there was all these different, like, who is better, chemistry, whatever. We didn't get the job. Like, sorry. But we 
killed it, we though. Did, we <laughs> we did. had chemistry. We, they were so, you guys were so stupid to not hire us. No, but we loved, we, I loved everybody who auditioned. Yeah. It was you, me, Reese Waters, who got it. Yep. Danny Cannell, yep. who got it. Marianella, Marianella, who got it. Like, when these two losers who didn't yep. get it. There was somebody, was it, was Laura Rutledge in there? Probably. I think um, Laura Rutledge might have been in there. There was somebody else. That Laura, was we're huge. gonna put this out on Twitter. If you were in there, we have to know who else was. Who else? Um, she was on Sports Center forever. Um, she's an author now. She was at ESPN forever. I don't know. She who? just released a book. Who? Um, uh, it'll come to me. Jamel? Yeah, Jamel. Jamel yep. Hill was, she was in there? there. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. <gasps> we did. Yeah, yes, it was so us we three. Out. I think it was like that was the vibe. We didn't get it, but it was super fun. And that's how I met you. And you just have this vibe that people want to be around. So it does not surprise me that you have all the success and that all of these young quarterbacks learn from you and uh, that you're so invested in them. It all shows, and it's amazing. So let's get into some of this. Because you work with Elite 11, yeah. and you spend your time around impressionable minds, high school quarterbacks, and uh, guys like Kyler Murray, Tua, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. Who is the kid that you saw and you thought, oh, snap, he's going to be a no-doubt star? Yeah, well, there's four that always come to mind. Okay. Jameis is the first one, Jameis Winston. You met him and walked the promenade in Santa Monica. Because you do a lot of stuff off the field. We call it like beyond the X's and O's. And you yeah. just want to see how they interact with fans, humans, each other, f strangers. He was off the charts in high school at 16 years old. Um, I look at Tua. Tua, his it factor was better than anybody I've ever seen. Like, Whoa. Tua could connect to anybody. Anybody from anywhere, and you're like, whoa, what is this? What does that mean, like charisma, or just? It was like he could connect to somebody from South Florida who lives and breathes football since they were a kid, or uh, some big offensive lineman from the Midwest, and they could be boys. And Tua, like, he doesn't cuss. Like, he's very much, like, straight edge, or at least yeah. at that stage he was. And he could just connect with everybody. Like, hey, what's happening, man? And he was in. And that was a superpower for him. I think it still is. Trevor Lawrence, you could tell. You're like, whoa, this guy's real. Justin what do you Fields. mean you can tell this guy's real? We're so, talking intangibles? I, I think everything, because all the players at that age can pass. Mm -hmm. They just get to the Elite 11. You have to be a talented quarterback. But when I looked and when we looked at Trevor Lawrence, clearly he had an elite arm. But his presence, like you'd love this. We have them all do these essays. And his favorite thing to do, and one of his goals in life, was to be around Anthony Bourdain and travel the globe. <gasps> wow. Instantly for me, I'm like, oh, if that's you, I'm he's like, like, this is the guy. Uh, Justin Fields. He was another guy, dual sport athlete. Like he was really talented, really competitive, but in the room, like I would kind of just creep behind the guys and watch him take notes. Mm -hmm. And to watch him, the diligence, the focus was, was through the roof. And then I think Caleb Williams now, like Caleb, he was just, you could tell he was just a different type of guy than everybody else his year at Elite 11. So, so that was it. Um, we've seen hundreds and hundreds of guys yeah. every year. You see over a thousand. Does the it factor, the intent, the presence, the walking on the promenade with Jameis, who's very charismatic, or what, the, the Tua getting along with everyone, does that equal success? Have you seen those guys, and how important is it in their success into the NFL? Yeah, I think there's a couple elements of that. Like, I truly believe, we, we talk about Elite 11 all the time, like, are you a seeker? Like, are you seeking knowledge? Are you seeking conversation? Or are you at 16, like, I'm good. I got to figure it out. And there's a lot of that now, yeah. especially with NIL and the world, which is high school recruiting. It's, it's off the charts. But the individuals that are like, I want to go learn, like teach me, whether it's Scheme, XO, Trent Dilfer's our head coach. Like you're in his room all night long. Awesome. Or you're trying to just learn about media training. Or you're trying to learn about your own interpersonal communication skills. Or we bring in Dr. Michael Gervais, who was with the Seahawks for a decade, around mental health. Like, are you seeking? And that to me is what cuts through all of it. And, and it really boils down to one of two things. Do you love what the game does for you? which is followers, attention, et cetera, or do you love what you can do for the game? Like mm -hmm. the clip of Lamar, clearly loves what he could do for the game. And mm -hmm. I think the young men that figure that out earlier than others are the ones that have more likely success. Is there one that you can point to that all in all of you guys, and you see hundreds of these guys that you're like, how did I miss that? He yeah. wasn't a seeker. He wasn't a guy who had the top five it factor and he's crushing it. It's hard. Like I was going through our list, just kind of thinking about that question. And to me, so much of the Elite 11 and where you go to college is fit. Like, there's so many things. Like, if you look at it, and I think also, like, we judge guys on success and failure in, in really unique ways, right? Mm -hmm. If you didn't go to the Heisman, you're a bust. If you weren't mm -hmm. a first round pick, you're a bust because you were a five star QB. Like, look at all those faces, right? Whether it's Will Greer, Bo Nix, Caleb Williams, or guys that aren't playing at all. Like, I don't think that's defined as dramatic success or dramatic failure. Right. So you go to the numbers. I think. Since 1920, I think a thousand quarterbacks, less than a thousand quarterbacks have attempted a pass in the NFL. Wow. So if you look about it, like 
thousands and thousands play high school football every year. Thousands go to college. So th that was a huge part of the book of like redefining bust, redefining didn't make it. Because I look at Gunnar Keel, who ended yeah. up going to multiple colleges, and he's dubbed one of the biggest busts of all time. He's got a degree. He's got engaged. He's got a full-time yeah. job. Like he's he's really healthy mentally, but he got lit up by Les Miles and one of the most inappropriate social media things I've ever seen in recruiting. Right when social media began, and he it defined him. And I think a lot of these guys that that's been the joy of interviewing 50 plus was they felt like they were defined by a ranking that somebody else gave them. So that's what this is. You interview. Tell me the premise. Yeah. Before we get to Pete Carroll, who wrote the foreword. No yeah. big deal. What? So Joey Roberts and I, who you know, yes. Joey and I uh, co-wrote it three years ago with the Elite 11. We sat down, had a cup of coffee and said, parents and players keep asking the same questions about how do I figure this thing out? How do I deal with a scholarship? How do I deal with transferring? How do I deal with now NIL? How do I deal with my mental health? How do I deal with women on college campus? Yeah. And we're like, dude, like we can't talk to all of them. We need to create something that can serve as a tribe of mentors for all those individuals going through it and their parents. Because you can't Google how to be like the mom or dad of a walk-on or a five-star player. Right. So we said, let's not only give our advice from our experience, but also let's see if we can get it from those players that have lived it. Is Josh Rosen in this book? Josh Rosen is in that book. Josh gives an amazing story in that book because Josh, to me, is dramatically misunderstood. He gets lit up as a freshman because he joined a fraternity. Yeah. Well, in the book, you read, why did he join the fraternity? He said, well, I was a mid-year enrollee. I just wanted some friends, mm. right? Like new to a school, new to a community, a bunch of 22, 23-year-old guys. Well, was it fair for him to get destroyed on social media? I don't think so. But that's the world that we clearly live in right now. So to hear from them was amazing. And then we added to it, Kay. We said, let's get advice for people who are mentoring these people. So we hit up 40 different ambassadors. So Chip Kelly, David Shaw, Lincoln oh, wow. Riley, Ryan Day, Brenda Tracy, the Holinsky family. You referenced Pete Carroll, John Schneider. Like, just people to say, hey, can you pour in your advice to mom and dad and or individual student athlete and help them out? And that's what came up with this 600-page pseudo-phone book that you're It's amazing. Right it is a pseudo-phone book, but it's an easy read. And you're looking at all the names are just so, it's, so, it's such eye candy. Sam, Sam Ellinger, I just saw, of course, Trent Edwards, Mark Sanchez. They're all in this. And these are all guys that you talk to. But I do want to talk about um, Pete Carroll because what a freaking year he's having right now. It's really fun to see. And before you were at uh, with Elite 11, you were coaching at USC under Pete Carroll. Uh, and you wrote the forward to this book. So Pete's having a, a moment right now with Geno Smith. And I just want to show you quickly this interaction, which I loved, uh, between them against the Chargers. This is, uh, you know, what do you make of this? I, I got a chuckle when I watched it. Why? Because it exploded all over, you know, the football world. This is Pete, though, from day one. What do you mean? So Pete used to often say to coaches, um, you get five seconds after a play to impact the quarterback, especially the guy that I was, I was coaching the quarterbacks. Yeah. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, in the five seconds, let's say Mark Sanchez or Matt Liner threw an interception. I can make myself feel good and be like, what are you doing? We talked about that in the film room. Or I could say, hey, man, let's move on. Let's flush it. Go to the next play. I didn't teach that right. We'll get to it in meetings. And I just love that idea. And he would always say, like, you have to learn your learner. So when I saw that and saw it mm. explode, I was like, Pete's been doing this since he was back at the University of Pacific. And his whole thing is always competing to learn his learner. Like, how do these guys think? How do they operate? What makes them tick? And he's yeah. been around Gino for a while now. And, and I loved seeing that, because that, that's so him. But why does the marriage work so well between the two of them? Because a lot of people are waiting for them to come back down to earth. Yeah, well, I think you can go back to, whether it was at SC or in Seattle. And a big part of Pete's life, we wrote about in his book, Win Forever, which was when he got let go by the Patriots, he recognized that he hadn't really developed his coaching philosophy. He just hadn't nailed it. And most coaches don't. Like, a lot of coaches go to Seattle, and when they get asked by him, hey, lay out your philosophy, they're like, never really thought about that. So he loves coaching that part. So when he came and got the job at SC, he was really clear about every part of the program moving forward, specific to how guys would develop, but also giving them the room to develop as their own selves. Yeah. So if you look at the Legion of Boom, which gets all the attention, right? right? What did he allow those guys to do? Be their personality within the confines of the franchise, of the program. Yeah. Same thing whether it was Reggie or Matt or Landell at SC here in LA or in the NFL or with Gino. I think it's about finding out how he operates, what makes him tick, creating an environment for him to flourish within it it's as long it. as he's within the bounds of how the program. How much longer is he gonna go? I ask him that all the time. I thought, I thought now, but now I'm looking and I'm like, well, I don't know now. Now I don't know. Well, he's always about like having so much fun. 
You know, like I can remember him talking at SC. I thought we were going to win three straight national titles against <laughs> Vince Young that night. And I was like, I could see him shutting it down after this game. That was, over, that was like 20 years ago. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, draft talk is start, especially, I mean, we saw what's going on with the Colts. I, I was talking about the draft yesterday, and they wanted to improve their stock. Uh, so there's the upcoming draft class. I have to look at this paper because I don't know much about these guys. That's why you're here. There's a consensus of who the top two are, right? Former Elite 11 guys, hey, oh, yeah. hey, former stars, Bryce Young from Bama, C.J. Stroud from Ohio State. What do I need to know about those guys? Because teams will be fighting for them in April. So the year of Elite 11 with them, you'll love this. So often, the Elite 11 staff, we pick the MVP and the top 11 out of the 20-some players that mm -hmm. come through in the finals. Well, that year, there was so much going on with social media. They were like, we have to flip it. We have to teach emotional intelligence. EQ is kind of the famous phrase for mm -hmm. it. So defined as, do you have the capacity to deal with your emotions and the thoughts of others with empathy? So we said, the players this year, you're going to vote on it. And we put them in pods, put CJ, Bryce, and Drew Pine, who's Notre Dame's starting quarterback, together Whoa. in a pod. And here I am, I'm the host of that show, so I just kind of observe and watch, <laughs> and you pick and prod. And I'm watching these guys, because they have to vote for one another. We bring in members of the military to talk about, like, in a Navy SEAL, um, if, if you went out and needed to do some sort of operation, there's no way you would ever say, hey, Kay, I love you, but you let me down. You right. would just say, hey, Kay, you let me down. Yeah. So we would have those three have conversations like that after practice every day. Who would you vote one, two, and three? And they had to look at each other. We're talking about top two guys in the Heisman last year, We're talking about possibly the top two draft picks. And it was amazing to watch them get real with one another. And CJ, this is a guy who had like one offer when he came to Elite 11. Yeah. He was gonna like on his way to Cal, possibly. And then all of a sudden, everybody saw him. And I, I remember sitting next to him just like this, and his phone, Oregon, Ohio State, just blowing up because he wins the MVP. And his life changed within those span of that 72 hours that we had. But those two guys are tight, and I think what'll happen between now and then is we'll pick and prod. Who's yeah. better, who's worse? What if they're both just really good? Well, who's better, who's worse, Yogi? I don't know, I think it depends <laughs> on what you want. Like, Bryce is kind of like your, I call him Steph Curry. Okay. He's like a true point guard, like kind of dish, can deal, he's got that vibe to him. CJ has a totally different type of player. Physicality, how he moves, how he throws. It's all about fit. Yeah, he's a different demeanor. Whether it's college or the NFL, it's all about fit. There's so many things that can go your way or not. Like, I'm a huge Sam Darnold guy. Terrible with the Jets. The fit was not okay. The whole thing about that organization. How is Sam? He's doing all right. Is he? Yeah, we gotta get him healthy. We gotta there get we him go. healthy. We gotta get, we love, I love Sam Darnold. Okay, you can get this book on Amazon. Uh, five star QB, it's uh, really, uh, we're gonna put it on the, on the shelf. I don't yeah. know what we're taking off the shelf. Sorry, yeah, you gotta flip it around, sorry though, Led you know? Zeppelin. Down, sorry, right Rolling now. Stones. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Go, yeah. But it's what cool people do. Yeah. Um, we're going to put this up there, of course. Do we have to go or can we keep Yogi for these plays? We have to go? They're saying yes, I have to go. He's got to come back. Yogi Roth, you're the best. We uh, are going to hopefully have you on again soon. You don't live very far. Ten minutes. We have to get in how you met your wife. You met as a wife on a plane. Look, it's a whole thing. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Great to see you. Thank <laughs> you. so much better. That's why FanDuel Casino has a daily free-to-play game. Bye, Yogi. Uh, Yogi, why are you taking footage? Bye! Reward machine, a free game that gives players a chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. FanDuel's reward machine has already given away over 5 million in prizes to over 250,000 winners. That's a lot of numbers, but if you want to get in on that action, go and log in and spin for a free chance at rewards. you got more to come on Up and Adams after this. Bye. Wow. I love this thing. I love this team. 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 I love. Oh, that was bad. Oh, that, oh, that was bad verse right there. Oh, God. Uh, I don't trust anyone, but but Matthew Hamilton, and he's here now, so we're gonna play a little game. <laughs> I don't even know if I what trust you. What a way you. to come back from, from break. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. trust anyone. I don't know if I trust you either. I'm. What did I, I do? I'm so annoyed at these Bears fans. Still, I'll show. I've got a real bee in my bonnet about it. Bee in your bonnet. All right. <laughs> and, and are you? Aren't you a little peeved? It's a little. Yeah, I mean, you've been you you supported Justin Fields even before he was a Bear going into that draft. You talked about him constantly, so I don't know where where this negative energy is coming from because you've literally I been a big supporter of his from the beginning. They're angry. They haven't won, and I'm supposed to be pro Bears no matter what. And 
when I, I think the Bengals helmet has something to do with it. I think, did, we, did we not kick off the Bears helmet for the Bengals helmet? I think we did. I think there's a whole thing there, which I understand. I, but I like, could do it. I kind of understand that. You lost the, <laughs> you lost the game. Like, no, like, yeah. Win the game, and then maybe I'll want to be on the band. I'm just saying. Okay, uh, we're going to play trust <laughs> call here. So what's going to happen is we are going to each be given two options and decide which we trust more in trust ball action. So do you want me to tee you up first, Matt? I think I will. Both New York City teams, my friend, have six wins already this season. We did not see it coming, but here we are. Who do you trust more to make the playoffs, my friend? Giants or Jets? Oh, oh. I mean, I honestly, <laughs> I, th I think they're both getting in at this point. But if I have to pick one, which I mean, I know you're going to force me to do. Um, yeah. I'm picking the Giants. I just think they've been more consistent week to week. And I think the competition in the NFC is just, it's weak right now, let's be honest, uh, especially with those teams that are on the outside looking to get in. In the AFC, the Jets still have to fight off the Patriots, who they lost to already. They have to fight yeah. off the Bengals, who they lost to. Um, and, you know, I just think I, I just think it's a tougher path in the AFC with the way that things are constructed. And I think it's really going to come down to the Jets that week 11 game. They have the bye this week. Oh, yeah. Week 11, they take on the Patriots in Foxborough. Tough. I think if they win that one, they get in. If they lose, it's going to be it's going to be tough. Patriots have a bye this week and they've got three tough ones, including said Jets. They got the Vikings. They got the Bills. So things might shuffle in that AFC East. Uh, but I mean, if you look at those guys, what a win for bald, bald men in New York. Craig Germain, uh, Matt <laughs> Hamilton. Craig, can we put those guys? back up is it possible i mean <laughs> this is right so craig germain our old uh, overlord at the uh, nfl network who we we love like this is a win for him isn't it what a week for bald men in new york yep and your mind immediately goes to craig yeah. fantastic no craig, one else craig has germain. any idea what we're talking about but craig will know no craig will know and that's all um, that matters when this clip gets cut off and put on twitter all right uh do you have one for me right, i have one yeah, yeah i have one for you okay. um so the Seahawks are at six and three atop the NFC West right now. But those Niners, they have Christian McCaffrey. Yes. They have something going right now. Which team do you trust more to win the NFC West? The Seahawks or the Niners? Yogi just sold me on the church of this man and his coaching philosophy and style and all of that. And then there's this guy who's got lots of weapons. This is tough because I like what the Seahawks have been doing. But you cannot convince me away from this team that we're about to see a surge from the Niners because this team, this dude yeah. has the number one defense <laughs> in the national football game. Jimmy, nobody wants to talk about it or give him credit, but you can't tell me that he hasn't gotten better every week. And that Christian McCaffrey, as I said, is going to be the balance tilter in the entire conference uh, in their favor. So I don't know. They're coming off a bye. Debo, don't look now, practicing. So, yeah. Uh, Listen, and also you, you think about all of this and you just see the beatdown of the Rams, right? The beatdown of the Rams, can't get it out of my head. That seems going to be scary down the stretch this season. But but which team do I want to see have success more of that one? If I'm really So which one are you which one are you picking? I'm picking the Niners, but I but I wouldn't be okay. but I would be happy to see that. Jeez, don't be so hard on me. If you saw <laughs> the things that go on in the studio while I'm doing the show, you would literally your head would spin. There, there is a, an entire thing happening right now. Do you, I have one for you now. Oof. Uh, I think this is going to be a tough one. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they looked awesome. Monday night took care of business against the Saints. Mark Ingram grabs Lamar Jackson's jersey post game. We all saw it. The Bengals got back on track dominating the Panthers. I don't know which team you are trusting to win the North. Ravens, Bengals. I love both of these teams. You're putting me in such tough positions, but uh, <laughs> but I think I have to go with the Ravens. They've gotten hot now. They've won three straight, and they can easily be nine and zero. I saw this crazy stat the other day. They're the first team since the 2011 Packers to hold double-digit leads in each of their first nine games to start a season. Um, but to me, it actually comes down to the schedule more than anything. The Ravens don't play another winning team until their week 18 game against Whoa. the Bengals. Not one of the other teams on their schedule has a winning record. That's an, as easy a path as, as you can get. The Bengals, on the other hand, they're the victim of being a first place team last year. They still have to play the Chiefs, the Bills, the Titans, the Bucks, and the Patriots. Oh, so I think they still get that wild card, but it's going to be a gauntlet. 
Oh my gosh, I could that is I could not pick between the two of them. That is I'm really glad. I, I'm really glad that that was yours, not mine. Uh, do you one for me? One last one? Yeah. Yeah, so um final play of the game, you need to score a touchdown. Are, do you trust Derrick Henry at the one yard line or Patrick Mahomes from the five? Oh God. Who are you picking? <laughs> oh man. Oh, what a game that was. Uh, this is a tough one. I feel like you can just stack the box though and send everyone after Derrick Henry, right? With this dude. Yeah. Uh, he showed Sunday <laughs> night. This man, this man is gonna run on you. When you think he's gonna run, he'll flick the ball into the back of the end zone. He can hang in the pocket, fire one into a tight window. So I just feel like at this point, I trust Mahomes a little more because he's so unpredictable uh, and he can beat you in more ways. Your thoughts? No, I agree. It's just that Mahomes can do so many different things. Although I don't wanna have to tackle Derrick Henry yeah. coming downhill from the one yard line either. So. All right, I got one last one for you. I don't know how much time we have left, and we both know we're not going to hear each other because Connor is going to be in our ear for the last 15 seconds of the show. So this is going to be a little wonky, but here we go. You just bought your dream car. You're in Manhattan. Who do you trust mm -hmm. more to park your car? Me or Mr. Magoo? <laughs> hey. I mean, I don't think this is even a question. I'm going Magoo all the way. Why Magoo? I saw your rims. You already messed them up. You had the car for five minutes and your rims are completely destroyed. So I'm going Magoo. Okay, they're not completely destroyed. I, I got a, what do you right. mean one secret one? Oh God. All right, I, oh, I have one for, for you. Okay, you have to be trapped in a small room with one of these animals. Oh, Which God. do you trust more not to mess you up? A snake or a bird? Oh my God. This is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> this is my hellscape. Both of these things. Uh, in a room, oh my gosh, but the bird is, the bird is like Patrick Mahomes, completely unpredictable and can fly all over and attack you in different ways. But I think I would fall, I would, I would drop dead if I was in a room with a snake. So I'm gonna say I would rather trust the nefarious, inconsiderate bird species over the devil. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like you could like stay out of the way of the snake. The bird could just come flying at your head at any second. You so. think a, a snake? I have a crippling fear of snakes. A crippling fear. These, I just, I don't even know what I would do. That was a really awful <laughs> way to end the show. But hey, uh, big thanks to Yogi Roth for being here. We're trying to drag him back in studio at some point. Have a good day, everybody, and go Bears!